How do you model this in Fusion 360? Coming up. Hey, Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso. Today, we're gonna to be modeling this in Fusion 360. So if you'd like to follow along, here's the dimensions in a drawing. And if you wanna download this, I'll put that down below where you can download this one as well as all my other exercises for practice. Okay, so starting a brand new file or design in Fusion 360, I'm gonna make sure the units are in what I wanna work in, which is in this case, millimeter. So we think of a strategy for this file. Uh, what is the most important profile, or maybe what profile would capture the most information if we were to start with it? Would it be doing a rectangle and extruding that and then doing a rectangle? then coming from the top and cutting this off? Or would it be sketching this profile and then you know adding an extruded boss? I'd say it's like that. But probably the best practice or simplest would be to start the sketch on the top plane. So I'm gonna start, that. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the origin, come down, draw a line, sketch a line, go to an arc. And I do that by clicking and dragging the line. Sketch the rest, lines, and I'm a little off, so the first thing I wanna do is I'd like to add all the proper constraints first, then dimensions. I'm gonna select this line and make it a horizontal line. This one's already perpendicular, there's that relationship. Are there any other relationships or constraints I should add? I don't think this went to a tangency. I don't see the tangent constraint, so I'll select line and arc and choose tangent. That ensures a nice smooth transition. And now I'm gonna add, start by adding some smart dimensions. I'll hit D on the keyboard and I'm gonna place this entity, this whole entity, this line is 90. And then I know this depth to be 28. I know this radius to be 22. And I have a hole, but I'm gonna separate the hole into another sketch and feature. We could go ahead and do it because this is a simple enough model, but for good best practices, I'm gonna separate the sketches. Okay, what are we missing? This overall height. Well, I know this height is 38. Now, what if you knew the height from the top to this bottom arc? I'm gonna show that real quick and then we'll bring it back. So what I'm gonna do is dimension to the arc. I'm gonna right click on the arc and choose the arc tangent. Select it, dimension to this line, and now it's dimensioning from the line to that outer arc. I love that, that's a cool capability. Now I'm gonna keep it just as a reference. I'm gonna right click and make it driven. Driven just means it's more of a measurement. It's not something driving how the model behaves or parametric. This one is now parametric, so if I change it, it changes it. But if I double click on this one, it doesn't do anything. Again, just reference, measurement, that type of thing. Next, let's extrude this going up. So I'm gonna hit E for extrude, select this profile. We're going up at 50 millimeters. Looks great, hit okay. Go to the home view, it's looking good. So a few other little steps to make, select the face. So I like to select a face or a plane, start a sketch. And now I'm going to do a rectangle. I'm gonna rectangle, drop it in. And it did snap to that line. So it looks like it knows its total width is now tied to that uh, edge to edge. And the height is what's missing. So if I select that entity, place it at 20 and we'll extrude that and that should be 10 and it looks like I messed up. I misread a dimension. So this is a good excuse to come back and fix it. So if you're like me and you misread it or did it wrong, how do you fix things like this? This is a great excuse to come look at the timeline. This is the original sketch and maybe an empty sketch. So let's go to the first sketch. Nothing in that. I could probably delete that. Let's do that. Delete it. Right click on the first sketch. Choose edit sketch. All right, great. This is the power of parametric design. Because I messed up and did this wrong, I can now make this 18. 
There we go. That looks better. Hit update or finish. And this then comes off at 10. So everything updated. And let's just do a quick measure. I'll select the face and the other face. What's the distance? 28 millimeters, just like it should be. Hopefully that was helpful for you to show a mistake and show it fixing. And you're welcome to beat me up in the comments. Always love getting beat up there. Next, let's do some holes. Select the face, start a sketch. I'm gonna sketch some circles. So I'm gonna use the S key, S for search. Search for circles and it wakes up all my different styles that I could use. I'll just do the center. Drop a couple in. Now, what relationships or constraints should I set up? First, these two center points are always horizontal. <coughs> Next, two arcs, they're equal. What's the diameter? The diameter is 10. The dimension from the edge is 12. The distance to here is 20. Height from the center to the bottom is 11. And then it's a through all hole. So hit extrude and go all the way through and make sure it's all. And that makes it intelligent. Make sure both are selected so that it cuts both at the same time. And there we go. What else am I missing? I should, the next thing is the hole. So I could do this at the bottom or I could do on this top face. I'm gonna hover near this arc and it helps wake up that center point of the arc. Could also add that as a constraint. The dimension is 20 diameter. E for extrude, we're going all the way through. So hey, if you're looking for more exercises and tutorials on getting started, check out this beginner's playlist, as well as this video that YouTube says you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.